Hello everybody and welcome back to that Tassie Wargamer and happy Mother's Day to all the, the mothers out there. I hope you've had a wonderful, relaxing, indulgent, rewarding day. Um, my video today is all about paint uh, and we're going to have a look at my, my thoughts and opinions on some of the various paints we can get that allow us to uh, pursue this wonderful hobby of ours. Um, I've been, I'm 48, so I've been painting ugh, since I was a very early teen, probably about 10 or 11 maybe when I had my, my first painting endeavours were, well, apart from plastics, unprimed airfix plastics, my first real attempt was um, 15mm Essex War of the Roses miniatures that I'm now stripping back. Um, and over that time I've tried a lot of paint. And uh, so I thought it'd be an opportunity. Believe it or not, I've actually got some of those original paints. They're not in the best of best condition anymore, but I've still got a few of the pots. And if I need to, I can add a little bit of something to, to get a little bit of colour out of them. Um, and uh, no, what we could say is a worrying development, where as we go through time, I'm finding that um, a lot of these colours aren't lasting anywhere as long as they should be for what you're paying for them. Anyway, we'll get into it. Um, the first, the first one here, and it used, they used to have stickers on top. Um, they were basically brought out for Dungeons and Dragons. And if anyone can comment about the, the they're so old that the, I can't even remember what the brand was anymore. Um, wasn't Citadel. Um, and these were fantastic. These, I bought these when I first started painting. Um, well, originally, actually, I might have even used the old oil-based enamels in tins but they would dry out really quickly so at some point along the line when I was still a teenager I started buying the water-based acrylics um, these were fantastic nice tight screw top lid as you can see it's still usable I've got other paints now that sort of that have taken their place but I keep them because they're still there and if I if I need to I could probably add a little bit of something into it to a bit of thinner to to get it going so this is about Oh, it has, I guess, about 35 years old. And Rel Partha. Rel Partha, I've just remembered it. Anyway, and uh, about 35 years old. And it's still re recoverable. The next colours that I went on, went on to, and if, you've, if you recognise any of these here, um, I am going from um, chronologically left to right and then over to the back, sort of left to right again. Yeah, basically in the chronology as far as I'm aware that I bought them. These ones here were the first Games Workshop Citadel paints that I ever bought. I reckon it was probably some of the earliest ones that they ever made. And this is still usable. I still have, out of all the paints I've got, I've probably got the greatest number of these unlabeled Citadel paints before they started having little labels like the one next to it. Basically identical. But these ones were earlier. These ones came a few years later. Still calling them Citadel as opposed to Games Workshop. I think they end up changing it somewhere along the lines. Um, the paints are still highly usable and I still use them a lot. Um, there's a lot of paint in there. Lovely paint too. It's got a um, really good pigment. Um, some of their oranges can be a little bit opaque. Uh, often you'll need to do a, as with most oranges and red soap, you'll have to do a, um, a good a white undercoat if you want to bring that colour out with the oranges and, and yellows and reds. But those two there, again, I'd say probably 30 years old roughly and still usable and i still do use them in my painting when i need those colors this one here might not be recognizable to a lot of people francheville some of you might go yeah yeah use it regularly not me and i don't see it often i bought this oh again uh 20 years ago maybe um and uh, in an art store i noticed it was universal water-based acrylic so i tried it and the pigment is like nothing else. I've only I only bought three of them and never end up buying more. I don't use the yellow and the the brown too much. Uh, sorry, the pink and the brown. It's actually a, a a dark red actually, but it comes out as a as a bit of a pink, a magenta. Um, but the blue is absolutely amazing for if you want that vibrant sort of blue. Um, and it tends to settle a little bit, so you do get some shading with the paint on its own. Um, as a set, it's thick. It, it's not thick. It's a beautiful colour, and it tends to settle in some of the crevices and, and give you that really nice 
tone as well. Every bit usable. It hasn't even begun to, to thicken up. And if you want, if you're a very emotive person when it comes to smell and you love the smell of certain paints, some of the paints don't smell. This one has got the most amazing fragrance when you open it. And whenever I open it, it takes me straight back to my uh, my painting days from you know 30 years ago. Francheville, I don't, well, they are still around. I don't know if they do the same quality or like some of the other ones here, their quality has um, decreased. But that one there is, is fantastic. Probably about 30 years old, oh, yeah, 20, 25 years old probably, and, and still amazing condition. And one of my favorite paints when I need those colors. Moving along, another one which is still very usable. Um, it was the same plastic pot. This is Citadel again. Um, they went to the octagonal, sorry, hexa hexagonal pot. Um, still usable. The white was really good. Uh, laid a color down. Really had some really good pigments, so it did. It didn't thin off too easily. You could shake it up. It tended not to want to coagulate too easily. And I've actually found some more modern whites that want to coagulate a little bit easier. Uh, you've got to use them after a few weeks and they'll start to get a little bit clumpy. Um, again, very, very good and still usable after a long time. And as far as Citadel goes, this was the end of their good the good period as far as painters, I find. Um, the next one well, they went to was, and I, as you can see, I did buy a lot of Citadel and for you'll see for obvious reasons that I end up moving away from them. They moved to these hard plastic pots with these screw lids. Um, certainly less paint in them, but also I found I don't have as many of these now. And the ones I've got, well, I've actually got three up here on my on my um, top of my bench to be thrown out. And the reason being is because they are basically useless. Oh, yeah, ugh. Well, maybe a little bit if I really wanted to recover them, actually. Um, they shouldn't be going like that. It's almost as if, I don't know what they've done. They've, there's been an additive or they've just taken something out. They've realised that their old pots were lasting far too long and that they need to do something to get us to buy more. So those pots there, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe 10, 15, oh, yeah, probably 15, 20 years old as well, I guess. But they generally, I'm, I'm, I find myself going, when I go through my paints, I'm throwing a lot more of this one out, which is a lot newer than these, the other ones. Um, they tend to be drying out a, bit, a fair bit quicker. The good thing is you can stir them, I guess. I'm, I'm just looking at that one I had up there. You can stir them. Um, and that they're not plasticky. They tend not. They tend to go a little bit powdery and you can break them apart when you do want to stir them up. Uh, unlike the later ones, and I'll get into those in a minute. Then Citadel went to same pot, different lid. And they went to a, as you can see, similar to that one. This one you had to screw the lid off. This one was a flip. And I don't know, it just wasn't bloody airtight. I honestly found I've got some of these now. Um, and they just, again, I've found I've thrown a lot of these ones out because they were drying. Uh, whether I haven't been doing it right, I haven't bothered putting ball bearings in, um, but I had been using uh, water. And by this time, I reckon I would have been using a white palette, so I wasn't pot painting by then. So I wasn't putting an awful lot of, I wasn't leaving the, the pots open for a long time. Um, but it didn't really matter. They seemed to, every time I, I would use them, they would look like they were starting to thicken up. That's the front row. Getting back to, getting over to here, I love these. The squeeze pots. Um, I've only ever found one that I've had a problem with in a squeeze pot, and that was game colour. That white went lumpy not long after I bought it. The rest of the colours I think are okay, but that white was a bit of an issue. Um, in the other squeeze pots, so yeah, I bought Flames of War, which I think may have been Vallejo, if I remember right. Yeah, it was Vallejo. Um, there was model colour. They're really good. I bought them when I started doing World War II, so they would be not too old, actually. Um, a bit over 10 years old. Um, they've, oh, they're Vallejo as well, I just realised. Actually, they're all Vallejo, but just all different. There we go. That's why the pots will look alike. I'm, now that I'm paying attention, I can realise that they're all the same. And the other one, which I don't think is Vallejo, well, I'm probably wrong again, but yeah, it's Army Painter. 
this is a great color i tend to do all my skin base in in that color but you've yeah, never had a problem it doesn't go gluggy stays as it should be and i really that's the thing i like about the droppers is you think about it you're you're not introducing air to them all the time you're squeezing a drop out forces you to use a wet palette or at least a palette um, and then then the lid goes back on i think that's why we've got longevity um, more recently probably last year i was up at my local model shop and i went and bought um a few different ones just to give them a try i went and bought model master glass with a tin lid I went and bought life color plastic plastic lid um oh that's another model master and i'm gonna the reason i bought that one is i'm going to show you that in a sec and i bought tamir uh, glass with a plastic lid or water-based acrylic now they're only a year old i'm already finding this brown one is starting to thicken up and it's almost as if regardless of what i put into it it doesn't want to get flow back into it. Now I have experimented with using both water as a thinner. I've used the alcohol based thinner and I have also introduced flow medium as a thinner. Um, and I've, I've done all sorts of experimenting and I find with some of those, the older ones, I can introduce any of those and it will give me a really good, really good paint again. Some of these ones here, it's almost as if they've introduced plastic to them whether deliberately or just obviously to make it a good smooth paint. But you can see with this one here, oh, see it's only a year old. Oh, now it's gonna call me a liar. But I was finding a really thick, very, very plasticky um, coating. And like you pull it off and it would stretch almost elastic, which would indicate to me that it's, they've got some type of, I don't know. It just seems a lot thicker anyway. It's a great paint. Um, the black's not too bad. I really like working with it. It, it goes on really nicely. But out of those four, uh, I oh, sorry, out of those three, the ones I bought more recently, I think Life Color. I'm finding it's a beautiful paint. Don't need to water. It, go, it goes on a wet palette. You don't need to mix anything with it. It's a perfect consistency. Really good um, uh, color. Uh, really good pigment. Not perfect level of pigment. Not over the top. So that's really good. Whether I don't know, I've tried it mainly with my World War II stuff, but it's a good one. So when I go back up, I'm going to be really focusing on life color. Hopefully they're still around. I did read something the other day about life color. Some some people with life color may be going under, but I hope not, because this one's really good if you get it in your local store. Oh, there is one more. You might all chuckle when you see this one. This is the last one I bought. This was not long ago. Um bought it probably within the last 12 months because I needed some grey for my for my Germans. The Storm Vermin. Uh, was it Storm Vermin Fur? These lids already, I don't know if you can see it. I'm sorry, accidentally rocking the camera there. But that paint, look at it, less than a year old. I've tried adding a little bit of water to it bit of thinner, it doesn't matter what it is, it's got a plastic consistency in the middle. Uh, no doubt, probably the next time I've got to use it, it'll be unusable. So, oh, knowing Citadel, or knowing Games Workshop, it's almost a deliberate act. They, mm, people aren't buying them because they're lasting too long. What do we do? Let's make their bottles not airtight. Um, let's add some plastic to them so they coagulate really easy, so they have to keep buying our paints every six months. Oh, maybe that's just a cynic in me. Um, this is the first video we're looking at our purpose-built, purpose-made um, hobby paints. The next video I'm going to do straight after this. I'm just obviously, my videos can only go for 15 minutes. If anyone knows how to extend it, let me know. But um, it won't let me upload a video more than 15 minutes long. So I'm going to stop it. When I come back, I'll be looking at some of the other colours we can get from the art stores. Um, I love trialling. Some hit, some miss. Some we just don't have the right... Um, right consistency or the right colors but some i've found some little gems amongst them so um, when we come back i'll be looking at the the non model specific paints see you in a sec